Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Now what we're looking at today is a T84 uh, that I rebuilt last summer for a customer. It's got less than a thousand miles on it. And when I finished it, like when I finish most transmissions, uh, I usually like to put my lubricants in there. Uh, this particular customer uh, felt he had uh, better lubricants of, uh, available to him uh, than the safe for yellow metal lubricants that I have developed with a lube company. Uh, the, the Jeep has less than a thousand miles, like I say. Um, I hope you can see this. The whole entire thing got eaten up. There's your front thrust washer, paper thin. The rear one is completely missing. That's what's left of a bushing in the cluster gear. Piece of another one. Everything is completely messed up. I'll try and show you if I can get in there and show you. That right there, that is metal that's been ground up. It's been eaten up by the lubricant. Okay, I think you can see a, a towel here, a little paper towel that I had. You can see all the metal on there. So thrust washers got eaten up, uh, cluster gear bushings completely missing, uh, there's not much left of those. Inside the case, I think you can still see a little bit of that GL4 that he decided to use. Let's go and dig some stuff out of the bottom there. The entire transmission has been eaten up in a thousand miles. Uh, it was popping out a second because the thrust washers were missing and the cluster gear was kind of moving back and forth, popping it out a second. And uh, that, that was causing him con some concern, so he took it out and brought it back to me. Uh, this is what I discovered. Uh, I think you can see some of the drain oil. What that looks like, it's just full of, full of metal. Uh, this is what GL4 will do to your your um, your yellow metal parts basically your brass and your bronze uh, it's just going to eat them up and um, I believe I'm not sure what this was but it was a GL4 that he used I uh, said it was recommended by a Jeep parts guy and um, I called that guy and asked him why he would recommend GL4 and he said he didn't um, let's see that's all just metal there uh, <clears throat> And, and, and you know I don't really I put out enough lube videos and <clears throat> I, I can't convince people to use the right stuff that I sell but um, this is what happens when you don't uh, if you have GL4 in your transmission you're, you're headed for bad times uh, nothing I can really do to make people understand but show them uh, things that do happen uh, I had the oil tested you can see the red here this is severe um, we're losing iron aluminum copper lead tin and silicon everything bad so my oil company uh, confirmed we have um, high, extreme pressure of the lubricants in that GL4 that he used and while he thought it was safe for yellow metals, it was not. So, again, that's all we have left of two bushings in the cluster gear. They're completely eaten up. There's another piece right there. They're completely eaten up. A couple more pieces right here. I don't know if you can see the deep scoring in that. Um, everything throughout the entire transmission is coated in in metal you can see it just coming off on my hands there see it shiny 
that's what GL4 is going to do for you. Uh, a lot of guys run it. A lot of guys um, are happy with it, but inside it's eating your transmission up. And um, I'm going to get to uh, washing this guy out and putting it back together and get everything cleaned up. So um, just wanted to show you what can happen when you use the wrong lubricants. And uh, if anybody's interested in, in my lubricants that I sell, uh, you can contact me directly and uh, I can get you set up with the right stuff. Okay guys, I'm going to give you a few critical tips for a T84 rebuild. We've got a new cluster gear in there, bushings and spacer, and that has been reamed. Don't try and get your counter shaft through there without reaming that first. That has to be reamed. Uh, we're, we're changing this. This was a new one I put in, like I say, less than a thousand miles ago. We already got a tooth. You see that, Matt? Yep. We already got a tooth that's messed up on that. We're not going to put that back in. You can see still some of the, the garbage that the GL4 um, screwed up in there. Uh, it was tough getting the, the, the spacer out of there. Okay, so put that in. You got your two thrust washers in the back. You got the one in the front. Okay, there's nothing else in the case. I got the counter shaft through there. That's spinning. And then you want to check your end play. I'm going to try and get in there while we're on the camera. You got it? Yep. We got just about one thousandths end play. If it's bigger than a thousandths and, and that's shucking around, you're going to pop out of gear. Okay, these are. These are shims that you can put. If you got too much end play, you can put these shims in the back. It's got the hole. Uh, there's in, in this kit, there's a, uh, a 12, a 10, a 7, and a 5. Okay, don't overlook shimming your, uh, your cluster gear. It should spin freely. And like I say, that's got 1,000s end play. That's perfect. Uh, any more than that, shim it. It's less than that and it's tight don't bang it in there with a hammer and expect it to work um, that's step number one and that's how you would shim it if you were out of spec uh, so we got that this is a new case that uh, uh, a thousand miles ago this was a new case uh, it's not worn uh, it didn't get too messed up so step number one make sure that's perfect and uh, we're going to move on uh, set up the main shaft put that in next and show you how to shim that okay guys I've dropped the cluster gear you see I got the, the counter shaft out cluster gear is on the bottom of the case next area you need to shim potentially may or may not need to shim it uh, is your main shaft okay um, you need everything spinning easily but, you know, I've got the front bearing retainer on. Uh, just, I don't have a seal in there or anything. I just got the, uh, the bearing retainer on, so that can't come out. But now, um, we don't know how this is going to act right now like this. I mean, everything seems to be moving all right. But um, when we put our transfer case on there and we torque that nut and put the gear on there, uh, it may tighten up. It may be all right. Uh, I'll show you what I do. Um... To test that we'll be right back with you in just a second okay guys what I have here is uh, an old transfer case that was bad I just threw it in a bandsaw cut it out it's what I use to set up the main shaft now you see there's some guys that just kind of test it they hold that that bearing in there uh, you can screw up your main shaft shimming if you don't actually have a way to hold the front and the back so we're going to take our gear, this is what you'll be looking like, this is in the transfer case. We're going to take our gear, we're going to put it on there. Yeah, there's some junk in the splines. We're going to get that on there, we're going to, we're going to torque it down, and uh, then we could actually see how that main shaft is going to act. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean this gear out. I'll be back with you in just a second. 
Okay guys, got our gear torqued on here. Again, this is just what you'd be looking like. This would be the transfer case. We know everything is, is tight in there. Um, you need everything to be... I just got a clutch disc on here so I can spin this easy. You need everything to be spinning smoothly. And what you really need to check out... I'm going to hold second. And you can watch third gear spin easily right there. You need a, a little bit of space between your blocking ring and your gear so that they spin easy. Okay, That's just what we need. You need a tiny little bit of room right here. If that's too tight, your blocking ring will stick to your gear. So if, if, we, if it was too tight, we'd have to shim it and um, we'll find some shims here. Okay. There's a package of shims, and they're going to go um, on, th on this side of your bearing, uh, and you can shim that uh, however you need to to get enough clearance in there so everything will spin easily. You can see when I hold second, third goes, and then if we shifted that into third, you can see second. One hold second, you can see the blocking ring spinning easily. That's what you need. You need a little bit of clearance between your blocking ring and the gear so that they move easy. Uh, if at any point, right at this point, when you've got your gear on there, if at any point that is not spinning freely, you're going to have problems. So, cluster gear, main shaft. Both need to be shimmed. Or not, but you got to check both of those clearances. You got to make sure everything is spinning freely, or your transmission is going to be bad. Um, that is how I do T84s. That's why I know when they leave, they're they're fine. Um, I've got a lot of T84s out there with a lot of miles on them, um, and this is the only one I've ever had come back. Every other T84 I've done, I've put my lube in it, and there's guys driving them five, ten years without a single problem. This one lasted uh, less than a thousand miles and went bad. Uh, poor choice by the owner to put the wrong lube in there, uh, but that's what happens. So um, I'm going to put my lube in this when I'm done, and then, you know, I don't want to see this transmission again. I'm sure it'll be fine the rest of its life, uh, especially that we check the cluster and the main shaft for proper shimming. Okay guys, I got the T84 finished up. I'm just flushing out the transfer case, trying to get some of that grit out of there. Um, maybe get a look and see what's coming out of there. Still a lot of metal in there. You can see the color of it. That's diesel fuel I'm cleaning with. I think you can see the shiny stuff running down the bench. I'm going to keep flushing that until it's clean. I'm going to attach that to the transmission and I'll show you what everything looks like when it's finished up. Okay guys, got everything fully assembled and with all our careful checking, uh, this is what you need to see. The blocking ring moves easily. Second gear. See it moving. Okay, and that's third gear. And you should easily be able to turn that with your hand. So. Uh, like I say, the only way you're going to get that right is uh, if it's not right with nothing, you have to shim to get this. If it's too tight and these are these are really bottomed up against here, it's not going to shift. This will shift perfectly. Nothing will get hung up there. And that's what you need. Uh, the shifting is fine. I checked that out. we got the little poppet balls in there and the springs and everything. It just shifts fine. Um... We have no play anywhere 
this is correctly set up um, all the way from the cluster gear to the main shaft and again uh, this transmission would have been fine uh, for a lot of for many years with the correct oil it lasted last less than 1,000 miles with the incorrect oil um, you know I don't there's a lot of talk about correct lubes um, I don't really care what you guys do but I want you to know that I do have the correct stuff I have the correct steering box lube I have the correct knuckle lube I have the correct transmission lube uh, rear end lube I have everything available for these things if you want it um, you can contact me um, uh, I'll put my uh, email address uh, in, in you know I'll write that down in just a little bit this transmission it will shift and be good for a long time it's getting my lube in there and I'm going to show you that going in I'll show you pouring some of it over the gear so you can see what it looks like the correct viscosity and and what you should find what you should get in a lubricant okay guys I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube in here I'm gonna let the uh, the, the customer when he gets it in the Jeep lube it uh, but I want to just show you what it's gonna look like what you should have this is the correct transmission lube you see it kinda just getting right on everything we'll lube all the gears get some down on the cluster gear I think you can see that's the correct viscosity it's safe for all yellow metals and it won't harm your transmission in any way like some of the uh, uh, other lubricants uh, some of them say they're safe for yellow metal but they really aren't uh, if you just look at that stuff that will stay on the gear for probably you know overnight it just won't flow off there like regular gear oil does it clings it sticks right to it uh, that's the that's the stuff you're looking for for your transmission um, and like I say I'm gonna give this particular customer a gallon of it and when this transmission is, and everything is sitting at operating uh, level you know when it's in the Jeep uh, he could pour some right in the, the top here just take the top oops take the shifter out of the top just pour it in there it's easy to fill uh, but that's how it is that that will cling to that gear uh, for a long time and it won't leave your gears dry it's not like 80 90 weight that shouldn't be in there uh, that'll just run right off uh, so you can contact me uh, Matt's gonna go around give you my email address over there uh, it's metal shaper at comcast.net uh, if you're looking for the correct lube email me I will send you a list um, if anybody has my old list from 2019 uh, that's no longer uh, good anymore I have a new list uh, and you'll get it it's uh, February 2022 list the um, the prices have gone up for shipping uh, PayPal is getting more expensive uh, UPS is out of sight on shipping and plastic containers are getting very expensive uh, but it's still free shipping so um, anything you order when you get the list everything is free shipping um, and if you have any questions don't be afraid to email me anytime and uh, we'll get those questions answered but um, this I didn't go into too much detail on this T84 rebuild but I gave you the two most critical areas the counter shaft and the main shaft get those shimmed right and you will have a long long life for your T84 so hope this helps somebody that needs it any questions on a t84 rebuild just shoot me a, a message or put a comment down below i'll be happy to help you out and uh that's about all we have for today and as always thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one